three, two. Says you're live on my Facebook. I know. I gotta shut this audio off. I always do that wrong too. All right, we did it. Welcome back to the Manufacturing Alliance podcast. This is Chat and Chow, and it's the first time ever that we're doing something a little bit differently. We're going to do a questions and answers. And um, what does that mean? That means anything you want to ask, Kirby here and I are going to answer. So I'm Tony from Alliance Specialties and Laser Sales, uh, where we do everything mold making that isn't mold making, right? That, that's weird, but we're not mold makers, but we are mold makers. We don't actually build the molds. We do everything that mold makers don't want to do. Yeah. So we, yeah, we take care of what everybody else doesn't want to do. Yeah. The polishing, the hot runner cleaning, the mold, man, uh, the, the maintenance, um, laser welding, laser engraving, you name it. Those are the things that we do. So um, we're going to start right in and we have Lindsay from Metro Mold um, and Design and uh, she's joining us back there. You can see her happy face and um, she has a question for us. I do. Thanks for having me. So I wanted to learn a little bit more about polishing. And so I know a lot of our tools do get the polishing side of it. So I wanted to kind of know what polishing does for a tool. And then also, do you have to polish a certain direction? Uh, typically, yes. Polishing will help all tools. Um, it Polishing is the purpose of helping the part release off of the, the steel after it's molded. Um, they're all different types of finishes from diamond finishes to sandblast matte finishes. So we cover the entire gamut over here. So, um, and the other question was. Uh, Polishing and direction. Yes, direction. that matters as well. Um, typically uh, you want to polish the steel where the direction of pull of the plastic is going to be going. So that will ease in the release of the plastic as well. Yeah. So if you, if, if a part is coming apart this way, you wouldn't want to um, polish against the grain, right? You'd you want to go want to have, with the you, movement. Yeah. You don't want to have horizontal lines on a straight surface. You want to have, if it's a vertical surface, you want to have vertical lines or, or vertical direction of drop. Linz, did you guys, did you guys have experience where there was an issue with <laughs> sticking or anything in the past? Yeah, we've had that. It kind of depends on the material. So that's why I know a lot of times it goes back for polishing and yep. sometimes cosmetics. So now I'm learning a little bit more that a lot of it has to do with cosmetics of it and how you polish. Yeah, it also has to, it could have to do with different coatings that are on there. Um, there could the type be- of material as well yeah. has, has factors too. Sometimes certain materials that um, tend to stick to steel, um, it depends if, if the, sometimes the, the material actually causes like a vacuum. And if the material, if the steel is too shiny, the, the plastic would stick to it and it would cause yeah. issues. Does it matter um, the steel type? Cause I know there's quite a different, different variation sometimes for tools. Does that make a difference? Um, usually steel type, uh, it has to do with the amount of cooling that's involved with um, the molding aspect okay. of the, of the tool. So if, um, it's not really my area of expertise. I'm not a- The type of steel? Oh, no, the, the, the molding aspect of it. Yeah. So if, if, the, if the mold is in a press, I can't tell you how to get the part off. You know, there's temperature factors and cooling sure. factors and all that stuff. So um, I'm the more of the guy that uh, if you have a, a finish call out, I'm going to put that finish call out on your, on your tool. Yeah. And it depends on what the, what the tool is doing, how you need it to release. Obviously um, the slicker, the better when it comes to release. Yes. Um, and, and as long as that, like you asked before um, the direction of the polish, right? As long as that's going the way that the part is ejecting, that's going to help you. Um, but if you're having sticking issues, it's something that it may not be polishing related at all. It could be uh, any number of things. Yeah. There's lots, there's tons of factors that can come into play with sticking. Yeah. Well, thank you. I did get to see you guys firsthand when you brought your, your laser to our facility. So that was fantastic. Thank you. Oh, good. Did you, did you guys like it? 
Yes, from everybody who jumped on, I know a lot of our engineers got a chance to take a look at it, got a chance to use it. So getting to touch something and actually use it in person and feel it, that was great. Awesome. Awesome. I'm, I'm hoping to be able to get out to Minnesota soon and uh, come and see you and the rest of the crew and um, just get to meet everybody firsthand myself. Same here. I'm ready. You guys to are, Chicago. are you guys open? I, I mean, are, are we fully open for visitors? We are. Yeah, we do limit how many people come in, things like that. So we do kind of watch how many people are coming in and we're very careful about it and have our procedures. So yeah. we're getting there. <laughs> That's good. We're excited to see people. <laughs> yeah, we are too. I think um, from what I've heard, everybody's in that same boat. Um, you know, we've got the AMBA, AMBA conference coming up in Ju June. Um, are you guys going to be going to that at all? I think so. Yes. I'm looking awesome. forward to that one. So we got that one and then we have a Marimold in September and then we have the golf outing in September as well. And I think yeah. this year you're planning on coming. Ah, maybe. I it's hope it's a good so. time. I bet. I love to golf, so I hope so. Well, it's not so much about the golf. Yeah, it's a, it's that's the camaraderie just, and the the dinner and that's just yeah. there. That's just part of what we have golf to do. It's fun though. I yeah. love to golf. <laughs> well, good. Then maybe you'd be on my team and then we actually have a chance of winning. There you go. <laughs> maybe. I don't know if I'm that good. <laughs> Nobody that comes is. Good. We're just being honest. Yeah. No, we all stink. We we just enjoy getting out and being around other people and having a good time. How are you guys doing as far as work? Are you guys noticing that things are picking up? Are you busy? Are you slow? Are you looking for work? What kind of work are you looking for? Perhaps. That's a lot of questions. Yes, it is a lot of questions. So yes, we're definitely looking. We are staying busy. Um, I know there's always, you know, COVID with sales. It did slow some things down because people do want to go out and visit. And I think people are starting to open back up about traveling a little bit. Yep. So that is great. Um, we are always looking for new business. So that's one of my biggest pushes right now is trying to find, um, people to call on, trying to get into new customers, things like that. Um, so it's been very good. And I know there's been some more things with material shortages, things like that. So things are definitely moving along and we're trying to keep ahead of the game with all of that, which has been working out pretty well. Are the material shortages affecting you guys and in, in your business? Um, not yet. No, we we've, we've planned accordingly to make sure that we have what we need on hand for each customer. And there's a few cases where you've had to watch it, where you have to shut down for a day here and there, but we've, we are not missing things. So we've had to plan very carefully when things are coming in. So hopefully things keep moving and we do hear that it's starting to pick back up. So hopefully that's the case. So you're on here and I'm going to give you an, early, an easy plug. What kind of work are you looking for? What kind of customers are you trying to help? Um, and, and how can you bring them some value? What we specialize in is kind of the high volume, low mix automated kind of product line. So we really do anything that is a um, couple hundred tons up to 720 tons. And we do a lot of consumer industrial product lines. That's what our facility is, the consumer industrial. So we do a lot of the high volume work that is being automated, being packaged and then shipped out. So right. that's kind of what we look for, HDPEs, polypropylenes type of materials and anything else really, but like the high temps we look into a little bit. And, um, but that's really at the high, uh, the high volume, low mix part lines where we can really excel and really give people a really good part price. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, I appreciate you being our guinea pig on our first um, question and answer. Uh, I see Brenda Clark is waiting in the waiting room. So I'm going to let you go because I know you got a lot of things to do. Uh, you. If you have any other questions coming up, do me a favor and just type them in the chat. And um, Mary Kate is answering all those questions or feeding them on over to us. And, uh, and we're going to keep that going. So um, thanks, Lynn. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Have a great day. You do. All right. So now we got a work in progress here. Brenda, add a pin. Replace pin, maybe? There's Brenda. Good morning. Hey, Brenda, how are you? Uh, that stupid mute button. It gets me every time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing good. Uh, I do have a question. We got a customer looking for some nylon PA6, 30% glass filled. Uh, they're needing quite a few pounds of it. So if anybody out there can let me know where we can get some, please let me know. Wow. That is, a, I, I have no answer for that question other than 
you know, lucky for us, we know, we know people that are uh, listening and could possibly answer that. So if somebody has an answer to Brenda's question, go ahead and put it in the chat and, um, and we can help in any way that we can. Do you have a question for us though? You're working on policy. It's we are kind of like a favorite of mine because that's at my first job to learn molds. That's where they put me. Okay. So I like okay. your comment on um, the polish in the direction of draw yes. or pull. Um, very important because the part's got to be able to come off and you don't want to see it on the part as well. Um, are there specifics online for customers to be able to view to tell between, like you said, the A1, A2, A3 still. I know years ago they used to have a placard yes. that like the plastics industry gave out yes. and said, this is our industry standard. Yeah. Are those so, things still available to people? There are still SPI, SPE standards, yeah? Yes. Um, the only thing that we found is there are standards but those standards don't necessarily go across from company to company. People still have variations of what they think that standard means. So um, what may be an A1 to some people is like an A is, is a BS A3 to somebody else. Yes, there's very there's a lot of subjectiveness in the polishing industry as we're as we're finding as we're finding out. So one of the things that we've started to do when we're talking to customers and they ask for a certain call out is we'll call those customers because communication is very important to us. And we'll ask them, what does an A1, what does an A2 mean to you? What are you actually trying to achieve of this? What's the finish of the part? What's the color of the part? Um, how much EDM needs to come out of this? Is it all the EDM? Because like I said, it's very subjective is what we're finding. And, and what one person sees as an A1 is another person's A2. And if you're quoting it one way and you're speaking a totally different language, you know, both sides are going to be totally lost. Yeah. Yeah. We've come across uh, instances where we would quote a job and then give the feedback to the customer and then they would have sticker shock. And then they would tell us, well, we need an A2. Well, we're quoting an A2 finish. And then their comment back would be, well, we don't necessarily need an A2. How much would it cost to do an A3? Well, then now you're now you have to reevaluate the entire situation again, and then look at it from a different perspective. So, um, like what Tony said earlier, is that you know there's there's subjectiveness with with finishes in this industry. So one of the things that we're looking at creating here is we're creating our own alliance um, sample guide that we're going to send out to customers and prospective customers. And it'll be something that, you know, people can purchase. And what it's going to have is um, all the steel finishes that we have, starting with a uh, like a Charmy finish and a machine finish and what the, the different stages of polishing are from um, a, a paper finish all the way up to an A1 so that customers can tell us when they look at it, we want this one. And so there's an actually identifiable look and finish to what we're gonna create. And um, our, our team is actually all gonna have their own guide so that we can tell them that this is the uh, Alliance A1 finish, or this is the Alliance A2 finish. And, and they're gonna get exactly what they're looking for and we can be consistent for the customer. So is that gonna also include like polishing on a texture? Polishing on a texture, what kind of texture? Any kind of texture. Because again, you got different textures. Right. And normally, I think a texture is just added and it's not polished. Correct. But there could be a time where you put a texture on, but then they want to take like off the high spots. Would they do uh, that? Or would they just adjust the texture? We've, we've done jobs in the past where we've had to polish over textures, but it's, it's really minimal. Yes, like you're saying, it's just uh, taking off high spots or taking some diamond compound to it just to uh, put a shine to it instead of having the dull finish that normally would be on a texture finish. Or, or again, do it in the line of pull so it helps right. and the texture's not going to create that part from being stuck yes yes right. absolutely and i i just got uh you know i'm not gonna i'll, I'll ask
Paul when he comes on, if I can mention what he just told me, because it's good news. But um, Brenda, thank you for your question. How's everything going on at Hasco? Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, the vaccines are rolling out, so we're looking at getting back out there and running around too. Yep. Yeah, I think that's something everybody's looking forward to and uh, and ready. To, I know I am. Um, I'm a little bit of an introvert, so I know that's hard for people to believe, but um, I'm ready for the next the next stage. Yeah, get back to somewhat normal again. Yeah. But we're extremely busy, and I'm sorry I missed it earlier, but I'm glad that I got to jump in, uh, but I do have to go back to work. No, I appreciate it, Brenda. Uh, and Hillary is waiting to talk to us next. So um, I'm going to talk to you soon. We got an, our SPE MTD board meeting coming up in a couple of weeks. So um, I'll see you there. And if anybody's looking for an organization to join where um, you just surround yourself with greatness and experts and engineers and people that really know the industry, um, SPE is a really good place to do that. Um, I know that because I'm not an expert at engineering or, or plastics or technology um, in any sense. And they let me be a part of it. And that's where I find value is, is being able to have those people that I can reach out to, like Brenda, like um, Scott Peters, like uh, Christina Fuges, like so many other people that have the knowledge that I need and don't have. So um, it's, it's awesome. And if you are looking for an organization, look at SPE. Thanks. Thanks, Brenda. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye-bye. All right, let's let Hillary in. Hillary's camera's coming up. So if you guys are watching at home, um, this is something new that we've never done before and it's kind of fun. Um, we are just answering questions. It can be anything. It can be anything about tooling. It could be anything about manufacturing. It could be anything about your life. Um, you can ask us what you should name your dog and we'll weigh in and give you some advice. Uh, anything we can do to help, we're happy to do so. So there's my good friend, Hillary from Westminster. How are you? Hi. Hello. How are you? I'm good. How are you, Kirby? Good. I'm doing well. How are you? I'm good. good I'm good. doing well too. Well, I know Tony, but I talked to you and, you know, a little bit more than I talked to Kirby. <laughs> <laughs> How's things going at Westminster out in Connecticut? Good. Uh, we um, There was a little bit of a slow start, but we have uh, drastically been picking up lately. Awesome. Uh, we got a ton of tools finishing up. We had a, you know, like end of the year grooming and, you know, steel adjustments that are all wrapping up now and a bunch of new projects kicking off. So we'll see. That's awesome. Ahead. And That's it's, awesome. Uh, you know, 60 degrees out. So I just went for a nice mile long walk. Yeah. The birds are, are, are chirping. The sun is shining. Spring is in the air. Life is coming back to normal. Uh, it, it's, it's awesome. I love spring. Cause it's like, what's dead is alive again. Yes. And uh, after of, this winter, I'm definitely ready for it. Just yeah. beware of squirrels. <laughs> yeah. I had a little squirrel run in recently, so they're, uh, they're somewhat dangerous. Just be careful. <laughs> as Did big you as he is. To avoid it? No, no, go ahead, Kerb. Uh, I was a gutter cleaning issue and I had a nest and I was up on a ladder 20 feet in the air. And uh, unbeknownst to me, I thought it was a bird nest when it was a squirrel nest. And it was the, looked like the squirrel from the Christmas vacation movie where it jumped out at Clark and uh, it almost threw me off the ladder. So. Oh boy. The, the only reason he's still here is because his gutters were attached to the house strong enough where he could hold himself up. <laughs> and that, I mean, that's, that's kudos to whoever made his gutters. Cause he's not a little guy and he got to pull that whole thing off and a squirrel almost killed my partner. Yeah. Okay. So, so beware, beware. Yeah. <laughs> I won't have to do that job. So I'll no, that's it. That's a thing Aaron should worry about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what can we do for you today? So I was wondering um, if you guys would share what, well, because we work with you guys, right? Yep. And so we are wrapping up Q1. We're doing some, we're in the middle of some, you know, strategic planning. So taking kind of what we set out to do this year and what the industry is saying, what it's looking like. And, you know, so what are some of your key goals as a company for mm. 2021? Let's get out of the reactionary mode and it's a new year. What are we doing? 
Yeah, I, I love that. So one of the things that we're focusing on is growth. Growth is a theme for us this year. So 2020, like everybody else was like sustain, right? Just, just keep, mm -hmm. keep going. Don't close down. Um, what we're focusing on 2021 is growth. And what that looks like to us is not growth in like, we want a lot more customers because we have customers. What that looks like is growth in how can we serve those customers better? What are the things that we can do to grow with them and help them grow what they're trying to do and grow their business? Um, and then just really trying to get back to the things that we had started before we, we dove into traction. Um, and then we got put on pause mm -hmm. when, um, when everything happened with COVID. And so we're trying to um, reorganize some things and, and dedicate time to, making sure that we're doing the things that actually matter. Um, we're actually building a marketing plan for the first time ever so that we can be uh, focused and, and have a direction and a, and a goal with the things that we're doing and, and a plan in place. Um, we have added to our maintenance department. We've added team members. Um, we just brought on two new salespeople. Uh, we've launched two new laser welding machines. Um, there's been a lot going on. And so that's, that's 2021 is all about growth, you know, enough of staying stagnant and staying put and where we are, how do we grow? So we're working on, again, training new people, getting out of our own way of saying, you know, we only have to, we're, we're taking the Westminster way of doing things. You know, I, I am so appreciative of what you and your father and your team have taught us in that you don't have to hire a 30 year seasoned professional mold maker or polisher or welder or whatever. If you take the time and you have the skill set yourself, you can train anybody to do that job. Mm -hmm. Pass on what you have learned. Yeah. Oh, that's very wise. <laughs> what about you guys? What are you, what are you focused on? Yeah. So we're, I would say a little bit um, different, not so much growth. Um, more of strengthening. So, um, kind of getting back to, you know, we did a lot of organizational and cultural transformation starting in 2014, 2015. So we're now at the point where, um, again, in 2020, we were kind of stagnant. So rather than when we've seen a lot of growth lately, so we're trying to strengthen. So we're rolling out in a new organizational structure. Um, so kind of like reestablishing, you know, team leaders and a management team. Um, we are, we have a, you, you know, all about our shop floor pipeline, how we yep. build the pipeline of people who to fill CNC and tool making roles. We're working on building that for the engineering sales and engineering team as well. Um, and we are revamping and kind of strengthening the internal Academy system. So it's kind of like, you know, you roll something out and it's great. Um, but if you're not constantly adapting and changing that, and so there's a lot of those types of things that we're growing, changing and adapting. Sure. And that's what I love about your company is that you're always doing that. You're, you're one of those few people that like stagnant is a bad word. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we definitely, I think that in 2020, I think everybody was just kind of like, let's get through it. Um, yeah. but we had set out for some pretty lofty goals in 2020. And when we got back to this year, instead of focusing on how could we be bigger and better, we have a really great thing going. We just need to strengthen it so that when we are ready to grow, we have this killer foundation that's going to make it easy. Yeah. And, you know, I don't want to just blow smoke at you, but I love being able to just talk with you. And, you know, we had uh, MJ on a little while ago and, you know, just all the things that I've learned from Westminster that I don't take for granted. People here are so tired of your company and um, they've barely even met you because everything I say is, well, you know, we could do it at Westminster. They're like, we're not Westminster. And I was like, clearly, because <laughs> that question wouldn't be answered. Yep. Um, but no, it, it's, it's awesome what you guys have done. And I, I know personally from a lot of different companies that we work with, how much you guys have inspired people and, and helped them to grow their companies and do things differently and think differently and embrace that idea of curiosity um, and just, you know, push the envelope. So, you know, thank you. Thank you guys. I love these. And uh, while I have you, thank you so much for uh, the quick turnaround on the recent project we sent over. You really impacted our ability to make our customer happy. We were, we were down to the last minute. So thanks for that. <laughs> what we're here for. Yeah. You know, we try one of, you know, some of the things that we hear from people is that, 
you know, turnaround is difficult and they're not comfortable shipping things across the country. Mm -hmm. Um, but on the flip side, a lot of other polishing companies that have maybe one or two people mm -hmm. that can work on it. So if it's a high cavitation tool, you've got delays of one or two people working on it. Or if you send it to us, we have seven people that can work on it and turn it around in a day and overnight it back to you. And, you know, um, that's what we ended up doing. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> it all worked out. It did. It did. So thank you. How's everybody at home doing? Everybody healthy? Everybody's healthy. Good. Everybody, we got the whole crew here. Uh, and I convinced my sister and brother to move out to the shoreline near me instead of in the boonies with the cows. So awesome. Eventually, we'll have to get mom and dad to move to the beach, too. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't they know. Like if they're their property. Do that. They like their property, their things, their space. Yeah. Your dad looks pretty comfortable in his house with 18 TVs in one room. <laughs> it's football room. Um, yes. Are you guys having visitors yet? Um, occasionally. So like if, so we have, um, customers, some local customers who have come in for like mold trials and things like that. But, um, it's kind of a hit or miss. We have especially within Connecticut, because there's Connecticut has so many restrictions still on yeah. people coming from pretty much anywhere other than Rhode Island or New York or New Jersey. Okay. Um, so anybody within Connecticut, we've been pretty open. Our Connecticut customers have visited us. We've been to see them. Um, but in terms of getting out to see customers in other states or them coming to see us, it's been a little bit more difficult. It's so interesting to me how different the states are. And I don't want to, I mean, I'm not going to make it a whole thing, but it's, it's interesting because I was just talking to uh, Camille from a seed in New York. And she was saying that, you know, they're pretty much open. Like the, you can have visitors, people can come in and, you know, Connecticut's not that much further away. It's just crazy to me. Cause like Indiana is the same thing, right? Indiana is open mm -hmm. and you can pretty much do whatever you want in Indiana. And that's, you know, people commute from Indiana to Chicago to go to work. Mm -hmm. And it's just crazy how the standards are so different from one place to the other. And there's very little consistency. So how do you know what you're supposed to do from one place to the next? And <sighs> we're getting there. We've been, we've been kind of just like flexibility and honesty is the best policy. Yeah. So rather than being stringent and the role, you know, there's rules we have to follow. So we'll follow the rules. But at the same time, if everybody here and our customers are honest about where they've been and what they've been doing and how they're feeling, then I think we're, we're safe and we can move forward, you know, as a team, the way we best need to. Yeah. I think that's, I think that's spot on. <clears throat> what else do you have today? I know you, I know you have limited time. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> just run in between meetings. Um, we had a company reach out to us um, in terms of our culture and kind of wanting to learn a bit more about our culture. Um, so we have a meeting with them in a few minutes, in 10 minutes, 10, 15 awesome. minutes. Um, and then I, I'm actually doing, I have a lot of like mentors and mentees and just people I've kind of connected with um, both with plastics or AMBA or locally. Um, and so I scheduled a lot of those meetings this week to catch up. Sweet. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you guys are doing well. I appreciate you calling. I appreciate you giving us a question. Um, tell Ray, we said hello. I will. And you tell the team I said hello and I'm excited to see you guys grow this year. Yeah. Well, listen, the golf outing is definitely going to grow. So you gotta, you gotta, by September, you should be okay. I, Connecticut I should let you out by September. I would hope. I that's what I'm assuming. Our, we're going to launch the registration soon. Our goal is to have two full 18 course, full, two full 18 whole courses set up, um, and just because it's it's up against a Marimold. Um, the last day of a Marimold is the first day before the golf outing. So we're hoping to really, 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 really capitalize on that and raise a lot of money for iWarriors and the other charities that we want to partner with and just get the most people we can outside and have a amazing, uh, charity event with networking and fun and just, um, you know, really, really pushing the industry a little bit and, and, and celebrating what a Marimold is and celebrating what, we've all been able to do over the past year in, uh, in manufacturing. So hopefully y'all can make it. I think it's going to be an exciting time for the industry. I think, uh, that, sh that might be that tipping point though. Like, uh, 
reopening. Yes. We'll prove that we can do it. Yeah, exactly. You still did it last year. It was great last year. Yeah. It's outside. We can be outside. Yeah. You're safe. (laughs) All right. Well, I appreciate you guys doing this. I hope you get some more good questions, but I appreciate you sharing your plans for the year. Absolutely. Thanks, Hill. Bye. Bye. Have a good day. You too. Bye, Kirby. Bye-bye. Uh, sorry, I'm not I'm not being rude. I'm not just being like a millennial or something looking at my phone. There's nothing wrong with millennials. I love them or Gen Z or whatever it is. We have questions coming through on my phone. So I'm, I'm trying to do that as well. Uh, Paul Britton was asking for the link to the Zoom. So I'm just making sure that he has it. So what else did we have here? Um, Larry Patton wants to know where his cabinet specifications are for his laser engraver. I did not send them to you because your cabinet shipped out and it's on its way. And we are in the process of building um, the cabinet with the laser. So um, it's a completely new custom application for um, laser engraving that we're doing for Larry. He's got a laser engraver that's built on a uh, um, a tripod, a camera boom. That's a boom one. Yeah, so that you know, large molds, small molds, he can just arrange that over it and be able to engrave it. So Larry, it's on its way. Uh, that's why I didn't send you the specifications, but hopefully in the future, um, we can talk about having you guys help us build some of those cabinets and make it a little bit, uh, easier. Uh, we had somebody waiting in the waiting room. Did they go away? Pedro, you were in the waiting room. If you click back on that link, we'll be happy to answer your questions. I don't know what happened there. What's that? Oh, is that on the text? There's like a million of us. This is like that scene in Star Wars where Ray's looking into the into the thing and it's like, and there's like a thousand of them. Uh, Nobody needs to see a thousand of us. No. More from Jan, John Casbon. Garrett Peters, Bell, Valley Hoop Plastics. Was there a question there too, Mary Kate? Uh, oh, if the tool sticks uh, on the wrong side, you can cross polish to make it stick on the side you need it to. That's what John was saying. So he didn't have a question. He was just giving a little bit more comf- uh, clarification on the polishing issue. So he's saying if the tool sticks on the wrong side. On the course, if it sticks on the course side, yeah. yes, you can, you can do procedures on the cavity side to make it stick on the cavity. Yes. You can add undercuts. You can do lots of various other things. Yeah. And so um, John was, he's live on uh, LinkedIn with us. So thank you for watching there. I appreciate it. Um, Paul Britton, one of his questions is, do you have any history with polishing sulfur bearing steels? I've been in this a long time and I've never heard of that. So unfortunately I do not, but um Paul, can you tell us what makes a sulfur bearing steel unique that it might have issues? If you can um, respond to that, that would be good. Um, Paul says he still did not get the link. Uh, Paul, it's on uh, the chat um, of the LinkedIn, the YouTube and the Facebook um, chats on the comments. Oh, it's posted on the page as well. All right. I guess we're going to post it in the comments too. It's so weird to see like a million of us. Uh, One one is enough. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Um, So Kerb, what are we, what are we doing in the polishing department? What are some of the things that, that make us a little bit unique? Um, I don't know if it's unique. It's just paying attention to, everything that our customers are looking for us to do. Yeah. Um, we're striving to be as open with them as possible and just basically just do whatever they want us to do. You know, yeah. they're at, in the end of the day, you know, they're the, they're the boss. So. Right. I think, I think it's partially that communication, right? We've talked to Chuck Klingler from Jandler about it a lot um, on the commu- communication side of things. And, you know, not second guessing the, the customer, 
but informing them on what we think would be the best practice, right? Yeah. Um, I think a lot of times the engineers are very good and they're, and they're great at what they do, but they don't fully understand maybe the polishing process and, and what that looks like. So here's a question that I have. When we're doing a polishing job, how much stock should people leave for an A1 finish? Well, it, there's all kinds variances, of variances, right? Yes, yeah. there's all there's variances, there's variables. You know, is it an EDM finish? Is it a machine finish? Um, is the part already to size? You know, it's just a lot of that stuff is things that we need to know up front before yeah. we do anything. Because, you know, years ago you had five thousandths of, of tolerance on a tool. Now you have five tenths. Yeah. So it's, it's a completely different world now doing polishing and especially when everything is done by hand, you know, we're using pneumatic machines and electronic machines and, um, you know, it's, it's so easy to make a mistake and just the more information and the more communication that we have with our customers to prevent making these mistakes is, would be fantastic. Yeah. So let's just say, for instance, what would you recommend to a customer that's, that has a uh, machine finish and they would like uh, an A2 polish on? How much stock would you feel comfortable with um, in order to be able to do that? Five tenths. Five tenths all day. Five tenths. Yeah. On a machine finish. EDM finish is probably eight, to a, eight, eight tenths to a thousand, depending on how rough it is. Okay. And the reason for that is that every single process along the way takes off more material. Yes. Every time you're touching that steel, you're taking off material. Right. And so you can't go, and most people know this, but this is just, you know, for the people that don't, you can't go to the highest part of the EDM or the highest part of the machine finish. You have to go to the lowest part. Yes. So um, when you're measuring that initially, you're probably, it's hard to tell if you're going from the high part or the low spot of that finish when it first comes in. So you want to leave enough material so that we can um, get that accurate polish for you. We just need to know how much polishing stock we have to work with. The more information we have, the better off everybody will be. Yeah. So Paul um, chime, uh, wrote back in and said, sulfur will make it harder to achieve a higher polish. Okay. I don't know if that's a question or a comment. Hey, Paul is there. All right. We're going to let Paul in. And then he's going to be able to clarify for us. Paul is like the steel genius. Um, <clears throat> when you, when you work at international mold steel, you better know what you're talking about. <laughs> hey, Paul is there. All right. We're going to let Paul. In. Oh, white screen. There he is. There's my guy. Up, hey, guys? Paul, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you guys doing? Fantastic. Welcome to our show. I haven't talked to you in like uh, three hours. When you work at the international Hang on one second. I had to no click something. Click, click. Oh, I hate when that happens. Yeah. I was watching you, but I figured, you know what? Let's get, let's zoom in. I appreciate it. Oh, no problem. Add some yeah. clarity and everything. How's everything going at International Mold Steel? Oh, great. We are so busy. It's not even funny. And we're the... We're the head of the snake. We, we started first. You guys are the, the, the ass end, yeah, so to yeah. speak. We're the tail end. Yeah, we're, we're, we're very busy. We're very busy. That's awesome. So um, you sent me a text earlier when I was talking about the, the templates that we were going to make. Do you want to share that or, or is that like private information? No, no, that's not private. You, you know, tell me what you need steel wise and I'll donate it for you. How about that? He's going to awesome. give us a steal. And then what we're going to do is we're going to engrave on uh, the, the pieces that we put out steel provided by international mold steel. People helping people. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we, yeah. we, it, um, what the lady from um, Hasco was talking about, I can't remember her name. Brenda. Brenda, Brenda that's right. Um, we did uh, one of the original plaques that she was talking about. Yeah. We donated the steel for that as well. Okay. So you guys you know? have got a long history of this. I mean, yeah, oh, they're the guys. The they are the guys when it comes to steel. We do it. Yeah, we do it all. And then, you know, anything that could help get the, the word out about, you know, how to polish and, and, and what steels can do for the, the company is uh, helps your business, helps my business. Yeah. You know, yeah. 
So what was your question about the sulfur, Paul? When you, when you have sulfur bearing steels, you know, you cannot achieve an A1 finish. Okay. Because what will happen is um, you will get pitting mm. because the, the sulfur exists in the steel as a magnesium sulfide. Okay. And as you try to, you know, what is polishing, as you guys know, polishing is scratching steel. Yeah. Basically. And the finer the scratch, the better the finish. Well, with sulfur, as you try to get really fine, you'll, you'll, you'll see pits or what they call orange peel. I'm sure you're familiar with that term. Yes. Yeah. It's so, ugly. It's ugly. Right. It is ugly. So when you have sulfur present, sulfur helps in machinability, but limits you on polishability. Okay. So you can only go so far and then you yeah. got to stop. We do have techniques to remove orange, the orange peel in the, in the steel. Right. So, right. Um, yeah, we've seen orange peel in S7 type steels um, okay. in, the, in the past. Um, typically, when a customer was, is looking for a high grade diamond, they'll, they would use um, like a, they have lens quality S7. Yeah. So we've, we've seen that material in the past and it does leave a, a, a beautiful finish. Right. Have you guys done any polishing on uh, 3D printed materials? We have. So um, for a while, we were working with Coherent uh, with their laser, okay. uh, their laser deposition system. Um, they're sadly no longer carrying that. It was a, it was a short lived thing for them. Um, but that polishes just like standard steel once it's all um, compressed. So we, we've gotten some really good results with that. Um, we've also had some good results, um, welding it as well, do uh, laser welding it as well. Okay. And were you, were you, uh, were you doing that on the Mar aging steel or on the H 13 powder? <sighs> I'm not sure which, which material we were using when, uh, when he did that. Okay. More than likely it's probably the Mar aging material, but our new powders come out in April. And we're going to be introducing them in the marketplace. Awesome. And that's yeah. a, and that's a powdered material that you have. Yep. 3d, 3d powder material with uh, high thermal conductivity and less cracking. When is that coming out? Uh, probably about four weeks, five weeks. We have sample powders now, but our, our bulk material arrives the end of April. Okay. If you would like us to do some sample polishing for you, we'd be more than happy to do that for you. So you can see uh, what kind of finishes um, you'll get with those types of materials. Do you, do you have a, a 3D printer? Um, I don't believe no. we do. No, but if, yeah. well, no. But if you have some of those materials, like if you have any, if the, if the company is giving you any sample parts or anything and you want us to just do part of it and show yeah, that's uh, the what finish, I was we can to. do that as well. Yeah, we're we're working with companies right now on, on, on sampling materials, um, but we don't have any parts done yet. Okay. Uh, we are working with a company who's doing some uh, die cast parts right now. Ah, yeah, we're working with... Uh, we're working with a company that's doing die cast aluminum um, for um, we're, we're welding that project and we're, we're proving that you don't need um, filler material in order to be able to weld it. So it's, uh, it's pretty cool. What are you welding it with? Uh, our ID one 600 watt laser. So okay. as long as the two parts are connecting to each other, we're able to get enough penetration to prevent any kind of leaks uh, or issues. So um, it's, it's pretty exciting. Cool. Yeah. How's the engraver working for you guys? Uh, we love that thing, man. Are you kidding yeah. me? They absolutely love that thing. That was, that was uh, one of my favorite projects because it was one of those things where people, I mean, you had people telling you it can't be done, right? Like uh, telling you unsafe ways to engrave your plates because you didn't want to stack them up like dominoes and all kinds of issues. Well, the, 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 the company that I, that quoted us, and, you know, I'll, I'll be very uh, honest, it was half your price. However, yeah. I would have to pick the plate up, stand it up on edge, lower it into their box, clamp it. Then we can laser engraver, then pick it up and then set it back down flat again. I mean, we were looking at at least a 15 to 20 minute project. Right. 
And not to mention that, you know, whenever you're handling steel, that's, you know, four or five, 600 pounds, you always have the, you know, uh, there's a risk, risk of being yeah. right of unsafe. So what we did is I, I, you know, I got with Tony and I said, okay, I want your product, but here's what I needed to do. So what we do is we, we drive our four truck with a skid of five plates on it and we laser engrave it. We do five plates and probably under a minute. Yeah. It's just, awesome. it's just that good. That's awesome. And you know, some of the things that our, our team was able to do. So we took a standard product and we just, um, we used some out of the box thinking. We listened to Paul with the needs that he had and we developed it around what was going to work for him. And, um, you know, it's, it's been a great project. Like it, it's one of those things like for me that gets me all jacked up because <laughs> it's something that when, when somebody says it can't be done or don't do it this way or whatever, we embrace that and we want to do more of it and, and prove that it can be done, that it's not just a no, it's a yes, but right. And so, um, it was a yes, but it's going to be more expensive. We're ne- listen, we are never, ever going to be the cheapest people. If you're just looking for price, it's not us, but if you're looking for solutions that are going to do what you need it done and it's going to help you to succeed. Yeah. We're there. Cheap, cheaper is never better, but you know what? In actual, in actuality, Tony, your, your, your equipment was cheaper. Number yeah. one, number one, I would have had to hire a full-time person yep. to do what I had told you would have had to be done. Yep. And the risk of injury and everything it, in, in, in a year, two years time, it was, it was cheaper. Yeah. So, but the, the best thing about what you guys did was, I don't know who came up with it. The probe. Yeah. Jeremy, Jeremy knocked that out. Oh, he rocked oh. that, that, that made it so easy. That little claw that comes out and identifies the location of the steel. Oh, yeah. So, you know, you're in the focal point. It was brilliant. So I, I give you one more thing. We started an employee of the month program and yeah. we use, we use your laser to laser engrave the plaque too. Awesome. So Very cool. we don't have to send it out. We just do it ourselves. It's pretty cool. It's a great That's awesome. product. Well, let's see. You, you want to stay on? I'm going to ask. Uh, I'm going to ask a question from Larry Patton. He sent an email or, or a message. I, it's it's long, so bear with me while I'm looking down. Um, and you may be able to help us answer this question because you are the uh, the steel genius. And then uh, Michelle is in the waiting room. We're going to get to her in a second. So bear with us. Uh, Larry says, "How does the presence of non-metallic inclusions and segregation within the mold steel limit the integrity of a mold steel?" Man. I didn't know that Larry, I didn't know you knew that many big words. Did you just copy and paste no, that? He doesn't. No, no, no. He copied and pasted no, that. No, he? he doesn't know that many big words. Come on now. He said, let's, let's refer to figure three, which there's no figure. You didn't, I mean, did he send a picture? No. All right. Uh, which schematically represents the presence of a sulfide inclusion contained within mold steel. After the grinding process, any such inclusions will be nearly undetectable. However, during the stoning polishing operation, the softer steel matrix that surrounds the hard, brittle sulfide will be preferenti- preferentially removed. Effectively, the inclusion is lifted from the surface. As the polishing operation c- continues, the inclusion is pulled from the matrix of the steel and a void or pit is left behind on the steel surface. An actual example of a pitted surface is shown in figure four. I think Larry found something and maybe he's going to post Larry. Can you just post that uh, link that you found that from on the chat and then we'll look at it. Um, Larry wants a probe on his machine. Awesome. I'll talk to Jeremy and we'll build you one of those probes. (laughs) It's it's freaking cool. Um, And then Hillary uh, was asking, she had to jump off, but she said, um, where'd it go? She was asking about what it looks like for our training. Um, how we, how we're doing that, what the process is, how long it takes, um, and, and what that looks like for us. Training a polisher. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's not something that is learned overnight. No, uh, it takes, a lot of people investing and time investing and being patient. Yeah. Um, I think if everybody's ever tried to polish something in this industry, they know that patience is a virtue and a lot of people don't have it. And a lot of people don't like to do it. So yeah. um, it's definitely something that you have to work at and it takes a lot of time to learn a touch. 
that is required to do this job? Yeah. So one of the things that we've done is, um, well, first of all, we understand that we want people to get better at it and, and have success. So we've uh, partnered with Steve Johnson at mold tracks and we, um, as polishers, as professional polishers, we run that part of his class. We, we, we are intentional on trying to teach people the right way to polish and get the su successes that they need. Um, and if they have any issues, we're here to help. So, you know, nobody's going to get it right on the first time. It's, it's the reason why Gordon Ramsay will show you how to make a steak because you're not going to do it right the first time. And it takes a process and it takes learning and it takes time and all of that. Sure. Um, that being said, um, part of the way that we're training people on polishing is we have some um, molds that have been discontinued um, that have uh, essentially that we've taken on so that we can have our guys and our team um, actually work on polishing real life tooling, yes. not just a piece of steel so that they can learn to stay away from um, sharp edges or, or critical areas and, and know that um, the amount of material matters that you're taking off. So once they polish it, um, they, there's no damage that's going to happen to that. And once they learn that process, then we move them on to a real world job that has that kind of application. Yes. Um, we're not taking somebody and throwing them right into a medical mold with super high tolerance. Yeah. Um, it's a, it's a little by little process. Um, we don't have, um, full on, uh, I would say process sheets or, 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 uh, an official training curriculum. Mm -hmm. Um, it would be great at some point to be able to get to that point, but right now we're kind of developing in that and building it as we go along. What do you All think right, of that, guys. Paul? Hey, I got to run, but uh, thanks for having me on and uh, enjoyed it. And let me know what you need steel wise. You got it, buddy. Thank you. All right. Take care, Have guys. Have a great day, Paul. All right. Bye-bye. Uh, so if, if you guys are uh, watching, are looking for steel, or you're having problems finding uh, the right material, um, Paul at International Mold Steel is awesome. He has helped us with everything and anything we've ever needed. Um, he's just a, a, a real um, honest, good guy. Um, and, uh, and I'll do whatever, whatever you can to help you out. So, uh, we got Michelle coming on and this is fun. Michelle, are you there? Maybe she's on mute. Hi, there she I'm is. here. There she is. It's a call in. Oh, it's like a call in show. This is something Ooh. fun. <laughs> So what's exciting for me with this is Michelle is actually coming to work with us uh, next week. So next week will be her first day joining our sales team and, uh, and uh, she will be a full fledged member of Alliance. Welcome. Thank you. So do you have a question for us? Now I'm scared. I wasn't scared about anything else, but this one scares me. Me? Do I have a question? Yeah. Um, not yet. I just saw that you were doing this. I thought it was a good idea for me to chime in and just listen. Okay. So do yeah. you have, do you have any questions about what you're getting yourself into joining a new industry? Um, I've been thinking about it a lot lately. I yeah. do. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I don't know. I think they're going to be coming, you know, once I'm getting my foot in the door there and seeing it all and hearing more of it. I'm yeah, just, uh, I'm excited to start. What's exciting for us is, is the idea of being able to bring somebody in that doesn't have industry experience, but, um, puts an emphasis and a, and a priority on customer service and, and serving that customer and making sure that they get what they need. That's, that's what we've built our business around is that, that kind of relationship, um, you know, it's one of our core values, gratitude, relationships, integrity, and tenacity. And, um, if you have that, we feel very strongly that you can be successful with not yeah. just what we're doing, but what you you're doing with anything. You have yes. to have attentiveness. Yeah. Yeah. You have to be aware of your customer and, um, you know, that's something that we saw in Michelle. And I think, you know, if you're listening and, uh, you get a call from somebody named Michelle, it's her, uh, and it's really worth talking to her. She's a good person. Give her, give her a chance. Thank you. All right, Michelle, we'll look forward to seeing you on Monday. Sounds good. Thank you. All right. Bye. All right. Uh, Brenda says that um, Hasco has steel plates in North Carolina, exclamation part, exclamation point. 
Um, so if anybody's looking for steel in North Carolina, uh, Michelle, uh, uh, not Michelle, Brenda uh, from Hasco has you covered. All right. Do we have any other questions? Where we we went an hour. I think that's about a good time to wrap this bad boy up. Okay, that's fine with me. I I'm hope- gonna go with I'm gonna go with Q and A was a success. Uh, you know, we got to talk to a lot of friends, a lot of uh, a lot of good questions. I hope we were able to clear up some stuff on polishing. Um, I know that you know there's more and more need for it right now. Mm-hmm. Um, we are seeing. We're seeing a lot of busy companies, which is encouraging to us. It's encouraging to the industry. Um, and uh, we're, we're ready to help, right? We've got nine polishers, I think, um, two shifts. I should know that off the top of my head, mm-hmm. um, two shifts. And that means that we can accomplish what you need on a quick turnaround time. Um, everybody down there um, is prepared and trained to be able to handle any kind of job from start to finish. Now, some people are a little bit more um, uh, about the finesse side of things. There are some guys that excel in one area versus the other, but we've created an environment and a team where, you know, we can pass things along and we can get things done in a quick turnaround. Everybody works together. Yeah, it's great. And so whether you are in New York or whether you're in Florida or North Carolina or Oregon or California or wherever you're at, um, we promise you, if you have tight deadlines, we will do everything in our power to be able to get that back to you, um, and get it back to you. Right. And I, and I know for a fact that there are hesitations based on, um, you know, let's face it. Sometimes the people that handle packages are not very careful. Yes. Yeah. They, uh, yeah, they can be a little rough. And so, you know, we've learned, right. We used to send stuff out in cardboard boxes. And now if something is going to be shipped further than our trucks it typically goes in like a military ammo case for to ensure that nothing is going to happen there's no damage there we have uh we build wooden crates that we put things in to make sure that things are are delivered properly if somebody sends us something on a bad skid that skid goes in the garbage and we build a new reinforced skid to make sure that when it goes back um, it's treated with the same amount of care and and love and respect that it was built with because um, we would rather it get back to you in perfect working order so that you can be up and running right away. So um, whatever we can do to help you, whatever we can help you, wh- however we can get you to succeed better, that's what we're willing to do. So um, again, I appreciate uh, everybody taking the time and listening today. Um, we typically uh, end our show with a prayer and we're going to do that. So we're going we're gonna to give a, a quick minute if anybody has any prayer requests that they want to put in the chat. I know some people just don't like to talk out loud and we will hang, we will get you covered and that's fine. Um, so, um, what was I going to ask you? I don't know. What did you think of your first, uh, chat and shower? You, well, you did most of the chatting, so yeah, that tends to happen. I think that's okay. You're good at it. <laughs> so how long have you been here? 30 years, 30 years, all polishing. All polishing, yes. Started scrubbing on a dishwasher door mold my first day. And uh, lo and behold, 30 years later, it's amazing how fast time goes. What's your favorite project you ever worked on? Uh, um, I've done everything that I can honestly say. I, I, typically, I like to do bigger stuff when I was on the bench. Um, now I like doing the smaller microscopic work Yeah, because not everybody can do it. And, right. you know, it's something that I've trained myself to get better at and worked at. And, you know, I think that, you know, there was a, an instance where we did a job where, um, it was a damaged mold that, uh, the customer reached out to a few other places and said that nobody could help them. And they reached out to us and we took a look at it and we said, it's no problem. Is that the one from team one? It is. Yeah. Yes. That, so I would think that's probably on the top of my list of favorite jobs of the ones that everybody said couldn't be done. And we did it. Yeah. My favorite, my favorite thing about that particular job is that um, we took it to three different mold builders and asked them what they thought. And every single one of them said, don't do it. 
walk away, build a new tool, build a new tool. It's not worth it. You can't save it. There's nothing you can do. And so then we showed it to our team. I showed it to Kirby and he went, no problem. We can do it. And we showed it to Rick and welding and he went, no problem. We can do it. And then um, it, it turned out so well that we talked to team one and we talked to mold making technology and they actually did a, a case study article on it. And um, uh, it's still one of my favorite articles were ever written. Um, but when they sent us over the questionnaire, they were asking like, how come you guys were able to do this and nobody else was? What were the special steps that you took? Um, you know, what did you do to be able to do it? And it was like, it was our knowledge and experience. Yeah. But you know, I'm asking Kirby and I'm asking Rick those questions and they both went, we just did our job. That's, that's what we did. And I went, no, what, I mean that we need to fill more than eight words, right? Like this is, this has got to actually be a story. They can't just use really big type. <clears throat> so like, what's the process that we used? And it was very difficult for them to be able to put that down on paper. Cause really it's just what we do. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. It really yeah. is. It's an art. Yeah. So um, we only had one prayer request that was from Mary Kate. So that's good. Um, Steve Grillo in California does a great job. I think he does a great job too. Thank you for recognizing that hill. That's awesome. Um, he's a he's a good dude. Um, so if you guys are in the California area, we do have a facility out there in uh, Montclair. Uh, we do all the laser welding and laser engraving in that location to be able to have quicker turnaround times from across the country. Uh, we don't do any other services there, um, but that's just a quick, easy way to get it back across to us and, and back out there. So um, I'm going to pray for us and then we can go about our day. It's 1235. We made it an hour and change. Um, I'm really great, grateful for Lindsay and Brenda and Hillary and Paul and Larry and uh, and and uh, Michelle. Michelle and John Casbon. Uh, and, and all the people that listened and participated. So um, let's pray. Uh, Heavenly Father, thank you for today. Thank you for this opportunity to talk with um, people and just be able to um, share this day and share this experience with them. We pray for the first responders who are out there who are dealing with everything going on, um, whether that's the, uh, the police, the fire, the military, the, the hospitals, the teachers. We thank you for their um, care, their dedication, um, and, and for doing your work. Um, we pray that you would keep us safe, that you would uh, be with our, our, our country, with um, our leaders, and that um, we would all be able to um, get along and live in a way that brings you glory. And uh, we love you. We thank you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, everybody. Thank you once again for listening to and watching the Manufacturing Alliance Chat and Chow. This was Q&A. And so if you like the show, let us know, put it in the chat. Um, if you'd like us to do this again, put it in the chat. If you think this was a horrible idea and we should never do it again, put it in the chat. If you have any other questions, put it in the chat. Uh, but if you want to get a hold of us, you can do that at uh, Tony at Alliance Specialties and Laser Sales.com or Kirby at Alliance Specialties and Alliance Specialties. No, that's not our, that's not our email address. Tony at Alliance Laser Sales.com. And Kirby at AllianceLaserSales.com. Yes. That's the problem of a live show. <laughs> but the good news is nobody's watching, so it's okay. All right, everybody. Thank you for watching. Uh, on behalf of myself, Kirby, and the Alliance family, take care and God bless. Have a good day.